This woman robbed a bank. And everyone loved her for it. Hi, nice daily. I am Sally Hafiz, and I robbed the bank. She went into a bank, held people hostage, and took $14,000. But here is the crazy part. This wasn't a real gun. It was a toy. And she didn't steal other people's money. She just took her own money from the bank. In Lebanon, there is a big financial crisis. It is so big that banks had to stop people from taking out their own money. That's what happened to millions of Lebanese people, including Sally. My sister was very sick, and we needed to get our money to pay for the medical bills. And that's why she robbed her own bank account. She became a local hero for robbing the bank. People supported her actions. They saw someone who didn't stay silent, someone who stood up to the banks and to the system. To be clear, you should not rob banks. Please, don't rob banks. Sally did not go to prison, and her sister got the surgery she needed. Let's build a country where people don't have to rob their own bank accounts. That's one minute. See you tomorrow. Okay. I am going to be honest, I broke the law in more than 50 countries around the world. And I'm about to confess to millions of people that I'm not a nice person. I am not a nice person. Let me tell you why. Do you think I'm nice? No. <laughs> To make Nas daily videos, I had to break a few laws. For example, in Australia, I hosted a large meetup before COVID at the Opera House without getting a permit. This was illegal. And after one hour, security came and stopped us. Legit, legit. Okay, let's shoot, let's shoot. I apologized after, but I made the video. In North Korea, they said we shouldn't film people in military uniform. Please do not take photos of the person in military uniform. But I still did, and I was able to show you North Korea from the inside. Say hi. Hi. In Copenhagen, Denmark, they said you cannot fly a drone. Well, I took the risk and flew the drone with hundreds of locals. And I broke the drone laws in 30 more countries. I swear, I am not trying to be an asshole. I am here to share one thing that I learned. If you are a nice person that asks for permission, for people to approve, and for society to agree, you will not get far in life. I love nice people, but you cannot change the world by being nice. You have to learn how to say no. No, no to society. No to outdated laws. No to outdated traditions. No. If I did everything society wanted me to do, I would still be living in a small village in the Middle East, barely getting by. This is why I tell people you don't have to be nice. Be kind, but not nice. Kindness is making sure you don't hurt people. Kindness is making the world better. Kindness is giving people a chance to succeed, which we do every single day at NAS. Niceness is saying yes, even though you really want to say no. The civil rights movement in America started when one person said no. Rosa Parks said no to a white man and refused to give up her seat on the bus. And that started massive protests in America and changed the world. Let us stop glamorizing being nice. It was illegal to rent your car as a taxi. The founder of Uber said no and built Uber. It was illegal to rent your house as a hotel. The founder of Airbnb said no and built Airbnb. You have to learn how to say no. Okay, do you think I'm a nice person? Not nice, but kind. Very what's, kind. What's the difference? 
well, uh, in my culture, if you say no to people, you are not nice. So you say no to me all the time. At my company, nobody thinks I'm nice because sometimes difficult decisions have to be made. Hey, I have a question. What? <laughs> Do you think I'm nice? No. <laughs> there are many words I would describe you, but nice is not the first one that comes to mind. Huh. To the village kid watching this, who cannot get out of the nice trap, remember, some rules are meant to be broken. Legend, legend. Okay, let's shoot, let's shoot. It is better to be honest, honest direct, direct, rude, and disliked, disliked than just to be called nice. Meet Bashar. Hi, my name is Bashar and I got arrested eight times. Bashar grew up in Nablus, Palestine, and as a kid, he would regularly protest the Israeli occupation by throwing rocks at them. But my rocks didn't go far. They did, however, get him arrested by Israel eight times. Then he realized he needed a more effective way to be heard. So he went to the US, pursued an engineering degree, opened 30 businesses, got into real estate, and got rich. Rich enough. So rich, he decided to make the biggest gamble of his life. He launched a billion dollar campaign to build a new city from scratch in the middle of Palestine. To house 40,000 people and create 10,000 new jobs for Palestinians. And his project has worldwide support even from many Israelis. This is the crazy story of Bashar, who instead of throwing rocks, decided to build an entire city out of them. And that was the most effective rock he ever threw. That's one minute. See you tomorrow. In Egypt, there is a woman who is hiding as a man for 43 years. She wears a man's clothes, works a man's job, and even speaks like a man. Who is she? Why can't she be a woman? And did she get in trouble when the world found out? In the city of Luxor, Egypt, I found Sisa. Sisa didn't always look like this. In fact, 43 years ago, she looked like this, with a husband and a daughter. But then her husband died. And in Egypt, a woman was expected to stay in the house, raising kids, not working. Everyone turned their back on Sisa, including her own family. It's your Bishara. Bishara. She was at the end of the road. She and her family needed a man figure to give them food, income, and safety. So one day, Sisa realized if she cannot find a man to help her, she should be the man to help herself. Literally, the man to help herself. She cut all her hair. She got rid of all her dresses. She changed her voice, put on men's clothes, and started working really, really tough jobs. Like constructions and shining shoes. In her society, these jobs are reserved for men like me. So turning into a man was the only way to get these jobs. She did these jobs every day, every year for 43 years to save every last penny to feed her daughter. <laughs> Sisa became stronger than most men, not just physically, but also mentally. And after decades of suffering in silence, Sisa was finally noticed. She got on Egyptian TV and was honored by the president as the ideal fighting mother. 
doing so, Sisa paid the ultimate sacrifice. She forgot how to be a woman. Now, this 67-year-old woman still dresses as a man and shines shoes for a living. This story has a happy and a sad ending. On one hand, Sisa was able to survive financially and raise awareness about women's rights. But on the other hand, let's not forget, there are still millions of women who are suffering in silence, who feel like they have to give up their gender just to have the same opportunities as men.